Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today's topic is genome databases. We're going to cover several. As you can see here, so we're going to start off back um, at the National Center for Biotechnology Information and talk about this resource they have called the Bookshelf. So here is the address for the National Center for Biotechnology Information. We're going to spend quite a bit of time here in this lecture and in other lectures. Um, the address is typed up there at the top and it has a search bar right there where you see where it says all databases. So uh, you just type in your search term here. You can, you can type in the name of scientists, you can type in keywords, you can type in a variety of things, the names of proteins, the names of DNA. And I'm going to type in the name of a protein which is phospholipase C gamma. Uh, it's also the name of a gene and the name of other things. So when you type that in uh, and click search, you get back what are called the entree results. Um, and so when I search all databases from that first page, it finds results in multiple databases. The first one we're going to look at is circled here. We're going to look at books. Uh, we'll go through this quickly, but this is simply um, I like to look in here as a teacher because I can find good pictures or really quick information about new topics. Um, you know, I imagine it would also be very good for a student because he or she could learn about a topic really quick by doing a search here. So if you click on books, it takes you to the results. Uh, yours may look a little bit different depending upon when you do the search in, in time. Uh, it changes almost daily, but for example, we have um, on this page these uh, five results. So you can see I've circled here the molecular biology of the cell, uh, result number three. If you um, click on that link, it takes you to whoops the book itself. Here, let me clean that up. Okay, so sorry about that. The uh, um, book reference is here. After I clicked on the link, it, it showed you the reference to uh, PLC Gamma. And so these are the topics that address that particular search term. And as you follow those links, it will take you to the actual book itself. So some of these books uh, are online in their full text, and you can see highlighted over here, the uh, search term, the fossil life AC gamma that we started with. Uh, the pictures in the book are shown there, and if you click on them, they will pop up into a larger version. And so you can get very nice images or uh, illustrations for teaching or for when you give talks um, and get the information from credible sources. So uh, I like the NCBI bookshelf. Um, I think you can find quite a bit of information about new topics very quickly by using that resource. Okay, let's go back to our entree, entree results page. Here we are again. Um, after the bookshelf, I want to show you OMIM down there um, at the bottom. Uh, OMIM stands for Online Mendelian Inheritance in MAND. There are 31 results that are related to our topic uh, in OMIM. This is the OMIM page. It used to be hosted completely by the NCBI, but, but now it's been taken over by a um, private foundation. Um, it does get grant funding from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, but it's also being run as a foundation, so they are going to ask you, probably, for money, a donation. You don't have to pay it. Uh, if you end up using this resource a lot, uh, maybe you, you could donate a little bit if you want. But for what we do in this class, I don't think it's necessary. Um, anyway, that it's the online inheritance, Mendelian Inheritance and Demand website is a website that character uh, categorizes um, Mendelian inheritance traits that are linked to human uh, disorders 
and to genes. Also, it's a pretty interesting site. I teach genetics, and so I make use of this a lot during my genetics class. Here are some statistics about the, the use of OMIM uh, as of today, uh, May 30th, so Thursday, May 30th, 2018. There are 15,905 gene descriptions in OMIM. Um, and there are 5,256 phenotypic descriptions for which the molecular basis is known. Basically, as you can see there, there are 1,584 uh, phenotype descriptions or loci, so gene, genes on chromosomes or areas on the chromosome, for which the molecular basis is unknown. So um, pretty interesting statistics. Oh, a few more statistics here. The total number of phenotypes for which the molecular basis is known uh, updated today, 6,204. Total number of genes with phenotype causing mutations is 3,911. So this is pretty cool information. They keep track of it uh, on a daily basis. Uh, they used to show it broken down by chromosome, which uh, for whatever reason I thought was sort of interesting. Um, my, the last date that I could find that they had done that was uh, June 1st, 2015. So this is not up to date, but I thought you might enjoy it. For whatever reason, I always found it interesting. As you know, we have 46 chromosomes, either uh, 23 pairs if you're a female, or 22 pairs and an X and a Y if you're a male. The largest chromosome is chromosome number one, so it's not too surprising that it, it has the most genes that are detailed here in OMIM. The Y chromosome is by far the smallest and it has only 53 uh, genes in the OMIM. So thought you might enjoy those numbers. So let's get back to some content information. Uh, once again I have left this on here. Sorry about that. Um, we searched uh, for a protein or a gene name, which is uh, phospholipase C gamma. But I also wanted you to know that you can search OMIM by keywords. Uh, so in this case, I just searched OMIM for the disease diabetes. And here are some of the results that came up. Um, I have an arrow pointing to record number 222100, which is uh, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. So um, uh, that's a, a big disease, of course, uh, in, in the world uh, and in the United States. A lot of effort is being put into learning about diabetes, and so some of that information is included here on OMIM. Um, if you click on that link, then it takes you to the OMIM page for uh, insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, and there are some things here that you will see when you follow these links. So, for example... It tells you the cytogenetic location, which is the chromosome, and the location on the chromosome. So the, the most prevalent gene that is linked to um, this diabetes is on chromosome 6, the P arm uh, at position 21.3. If you look up the genomic coordinates, which is a, a sort of a more modern way to, to do it, it's on chromosome 6. From nucleotide 30 million 500,000 to 36,600,000. That's its actual physical location on the chromosome. There are lots of other things in this record. On the left, you'll see a table of contents. Uh, we're not going to cover everything, but at home, you can play with this as much as you want and read everything. So, for example, there'll be a text description of the disorder, so what is diabetes, some interesting information about it. Again, uh, for teaching purposes, this is a wonderful website because you can go and you can read and find out cool facts about different things, as well as linking the disorder to a specific gene. It also has information about uh, clinical features, so um, I think the, the main intention or the main audience for this OMIM web website um, are physicians and uh, doctors that are 
trying to help patients that have different genetic disorders um, so the doctors can come and learn and read about the disease and not only learn about clinical features, uh, what the patients experience, etc., but also about the molecular genetics or the biochemistry. Um, it's got tons of information. There may also be information about animal models and so how scientists are trying to study these these diseases using mice or frogs or whatever um, there'll be a description of the if present there'll be a description of the animal model and you'll also be able to link out from the main page to a page um, of a catalog of clinical studies and so for diabetes mellitus um, 2,090 studies were found for insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. You can narrow this down using the uh, filters on the left-hand side there. Like, for example, if I filter out so we can just look at studies that are actively being enrolled right now, out of the 2,090, 266 are recruiting patients uh, or participants right now. If you're interested in one of these studies, um, then you can click on the title of the study itself. Like if we clicked on that top one there, or on one of the titles, actually, I think I, I went, scrolled down and clicked on a different study. Um, it will take you to the details about that particular study. So, for example, it will tell you the purpose of the study, where it's being uh, done, uh, these are all over the world, not just the United States. So you'll find them in Israel or um, in the United States, of course, or in France or, or wherever the study is being done. It will tell you about the characteristics of the patients they're looking for, whether or not you qualify to be in the study, um, how you'll be treated, all kinds of details. And you can actually get the contact information. So if you decided that you would like to participate in one of these clinical trials as a patient, then you could apply. So pretty useful. All right, back to the uh, diabetes page. Uh, some more information about the table of contents there on the right. What else can we learn on the OMIM website? Well, you can link out to by clicking on the uh, coordinates of the chromosome. You can see the gene. Um, so the gene is actually called IDDM1 for insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus gene. Um, what this shows you is a text table, tabular form, all the genes in that locus. And so the gene that we're interested in is right there in the middle. But right next to this gene is another one for inflammatory bowel disease. Or if we keep going up towards the top of the table, major histocompatibility uh, complex class 2, etc. So uh, some of these genes are named after their diseases, and some of them are uh, just genes. But you can move, you could examine every gene on chromosome 6 if you wanted. It would take you forever, but you could do it uh, in tabular form like this. Everything that's blue on this also is a link. So for example, if I click over here on the left where it says 6 uh, colon 30 million 400 thousand, that's going to link me out to a completely new web page. Now this web page is the, uh, it's cut off a little bit at the top, but uh, it's the University of California at Santa Cruz genome browser. Um, this is updated periodically uh, here. I pulled down a later one. This was from February 2009, but uh, uh, assembly, um, it depends upon what assembly you look at. Those are still available. This is showing us the locus on chromosome 6 where the insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus gene is located. You can see this little red box right here. That shows you our locus. There's a bunch of genes that are located at that location. Um, you can't really see anything on these details. Uh, you'd have to look by yourself and, and really zoom in um, if you wanted to get information here. 
one of the things that we might be interested in is down here are the these what are called SNPs. S N P S. So pronounced SNPs. And they stand for single nucleotide polymorphisms. Um, I can zoom it in out a little bit so we could just see that our in a little bit excuse me and so we can just see the IDDDM gene um, that's what this looks like now um, sometimes it's easy to get lost here but if you go and look at the top where it says positions and search it tells us exactly where we are we're on chromosome 6 30 between position 33 million four hundred seventy four thousand five hundred and twenty two to 33,525,521. And then the red line on the picture of the chromosome shows us where we are as we come down into the information down here. That gives us some of the details. So we've chosen some information here, um, just in case you're interested. The All of these numbers down here at the bottom uh, are single nucleotide polymorphisms. So single nucleotide polymorphism is a region in the human genome that is different between different people. And there has to have a certain percentage of people have to have that sequence there for it to be a SNP. And um, sometimes, actually most of the time, it's just a single nucleotide change. Like for example, at one position, 60% of the people in the world would have an A. But at the same position, 40% of the people in the world might have a C. Um, that is a SNP. They're different than single mutations where maybe just one person has a different nucleotide there. It's a cluster of people. Here I've zoomed in on one of them from this particular gene. So SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism. Here's information about this position. Again, it's chromosome 6. It tells you exactly it's 33,479,774. That nucleotide is either a C or a T, depending upon um, the person. It also looks like this is same SNP is also found in chimpanzees, which is sort of interesting. Um, and then there's detailed information about this. Uh, this SNP database is turning out to be useful for pharmaceutical companies that are looking at developing drugs. Sometimes drugs uh, can be metabolized differently between different people. And sometimes there are some characteristic SNPs that can predict your response to a certain drug. So um, this kind of thing is going to end up being pretty useful clinically. So back to our original lecture, we had searched first for PLC gamma 1. Um, I took you to OMIM and then got off onto this diabetes thing just to show you some a few things. Now we're back to PLC gamma. Whoops. Um, we can find lots of information from OMIM on PLC gamma, like references to journal articles to learn about PLC gamma and how it's regulated. Um, you can get back just to like our to our lecture last week back to PubMed and links to the actual articles themselves. We learned how to do that last week. Um, from OMIM, we can also click to the um, chromosomal location like we just saw for the insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. Here now, instead of following a disease, we're following a gene that makes a protein called PLC gamma one. Uh, you can see there its neighbors on its chromosome. So this one's located on chromosome 20. If I click on that chromosome location, we'll go back to the uh, University of California Santa Cruz genome browser. Uh, you can see a little bit of the information here. It tells you about genes, that, the name of the gene, the genes that have been found. There are some other details here that will be of interest to geneticists, like um, RefSeq genes and uh, spliced ESTs, etc. There's also comparisons between human and other animals. Uh, where there's a black line, it shows you that they are identical. So, for example, um, 
if you come down here, you see rhesus. That's the rhesus macaque. It's a primate. Uh, we're essentially 100% identical. Uh, actually, there's a little spot over here where there's differences. I mean, you can't tell the detail. Between the mouse and the human is actually pretty close. Dog, elephant, etc. But then when you get into these other animals, opossums, chickens, there is some conservation, but then lots of differences. Again, down here at the bottom are the snips. Uh, that's all in humans. You can, uh, right now we're looking at a certain slice of chromosome 20 of 38,000 base pairs, but we can zoom out to see the whole chromosome. So it's 63 million base pairs. Um, then of course the level of detail now is gone, but it just gives you a picture of the whole chromosome. Or you can zoom all the way in now. We're only seeing 113 base pairs, so we're at the level of single nucleotides. And as a matter of fact, you can see the nucleotide sequence of the chromosome right up here. Uh, we're within the PLC gamma 1 gene. Um, it shows you uh, here's where the RNA is. So uh, we're looking at the boundary between the RNA, maybe they're exons, or it's at the end of the RNA. We're back down to the alignment between the human and the rhesus monkey, the mouse, the dog, the elephant, the possum, etc. So now rather than black lines, it's showing the exact nucleotides. Um, and then other things uh, that you may or may not be interested in. You can, go, you can spend hours looking at this, as you might imagine. Okay, let's go back to OMIM and now link out to some other specific gene databases here. First one I want to go see is over here under gene info, right here. We're going to look at NCBI gene and also ensemble. So first the gene database. If you click on that link, it takes you to the PLC Gamma 1 record in the gene database. And this is on at the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Again, there's tons of information. We won't have time to go over everything, so you'll have to go to this yourself and I would recommend just clicking on every little link that you find interesting to see what it does. There's so much information it's almost unbelievable. From this you can also look at a picture of the chromosome uh, sort of like we saw at the UCSC browser but this is uh, sort of I think a little bit nicer, a prettier interface. You can zoom all the way into the nucleotides or zoom out. We're looking down here um, at this is the DNA but then down here is the mRNA and everywhere there's a line these are the exons and then in between are the introns. So it sort of shows you how the mRNA would be uh, arranged on the chromosome. Up here is a picture at a lower resolution, you can see the PLC gamma 1 gene here and which direction it's going. If you click on that link that says FASTA, that will take you here. This is the actual DNA sequence for that that region of the chromosome. So for that in which PLC gamma 1 is hidden. Uh, here we're chromosome 20 and you can see the numbers. So 3976661 to 3980437 that tells you where we are you can actually there's links on here if you want to see the sequence of the entire human chromosome 20 you can do that i recommend against it cuz it takes up takes lots of time um, and it's it's uh, many many millions uh, of base pairs okay back to the the gene data database why I left these in here okay. um, we can go back out we can find the RNA as I showed you before with the introns and exons and if you click on the this number here which is the accession number it will take you to the database record for the mRNA so rather than being millions of base pairs long this one will just be a few thousand so this is the RNA for the human PLC gamma 1 sequence. Uh, these numbers here are useful because they're called the accession numbers. They're sort of like a social security number for you. This is the accession number for this exact mRNA. 
So we've gone from seeing the DNA, the chromosome, the introns and exons to seeing the RNA itself. This sequence is so useful to have. That was the fastest sequence. Now this is the rest of the database record. It tells you a little bit more about um, how big it is. So for example, it tells us this is 5,205 base pairs for the mRNA. It gives you references to papers here and here um, where you can learn about it, who found it, and who uh, published it. As you scroll down the record, you'll get bits of information, links out to different gene IDs and different databases. Uh, from that RNA, this is the protein that would be made. And then down at the bottom is the RNA sequence itself, as we'd seen before. So that's the gene bank mRNA record for the PLC gamma 1. We can take this information and go to back to the UCSC genome browser. In this case, we're going to try a program they have called BLAT, B-L-A-T. If you click on that link to BLAT, it brings you to this page. There'll be this box, which will be empty. And into that box, you'll paste, you'll put the fastest sequence for whatever gene you're interested in. So this is the RNA sequence for the human PLC gamma 1 in the FASTA format, so just the nucleotide sequence itself. You don't do anything but paste it in there and then click on Submit right there. And when you do that, you'll get back results like this. It takes your RNA and tries to match it to the human genome. Now the RNA, if you remember from your genetics class, is produced by uh, an R, a, a total RNA that's made from the genome that's then spliced together. So going backwards by taking an mRNA and trying to match it to the genome, you're going to split it up. So this tells you that it, in this case it was able to take, uh, start at position number one, go to position 5205, it's essentially the whole thing, matched 100% of it, uh, to chromosome 20 and it started here and ended there but rather than being 5,000 base pairs it covered 38,000 base pairs and that's because it's split into the exons and introns this is what it looks like back to the the, the browser uh, whoops the human genome browser uh, like we saw at first here's our PLC gamma 1 uh, where I have number two here, notice that every one of these lines are the exons and then there's all this thing here which are the introns. So if you added up all the nucleotides in the vertical lines it would be 5,000 but the whole area is about 30,000. Actually it tells us here it's 38,000. So now we go back to the black results, click on details, it takes you to the actual DNA sequence and uh, uh, from chromosome 20. This is the um, cDNA, so that's the mRNA sequence. But we keep scrolling down. Notice all these blocks. Those blocks are the exons. There's a bunch of them. So this gene is a weird one. It's split up in a whole bunch of little exons. If you keep scrolling down, you can see the exons. They're in blue, and then the introns are in black keep going down. So there's more introns and exons. The exons again are in blue. Those are what get spliced together to make the mRNA. Pretty cool, huh? So you can do that really quickly for any gene that you want or any RNA that you want. Map it to the human genome and it will try to find it, its location, and it will show you the introns and exons. Now the last database we want to talk about uh, mostly is called Ensemble. Uh, we're going to be repeating ourselves a little bit, but I like this one. Uh, it displays things a little bit differently, so you may like this better than the UC Santa Cruz browser. Uh, you can get a lot of the same information. Uh, so I got to this from OMIM by clicking on the link to Ensemble. There's PLC Gamma 1. Uh, you can see a table of contents on the left and a whole bunch of different colored information. They're showing us the cartoon um, over here 
of the genome sequence and the information that's inside. So you can scroll down and look at that yourself. You can see using the different colors, it's finding uh, specific information. So this is all untranslated stuff. Some five prime uh, un untranslated region uh, before the gene itself. The coding sequence itself would be coding for the mRNA. You can see those as we move down here and we look and look for exons. This is the same information that we saw in the um, bl the BLAT results, but it's just displayed a little bit differently. They've broken them into different parts. So number one is exon number one, and there's the sequence over here on the right. Then there's an intron, tells you how long it is, and it shows you the sequence here, etc. So it will go exon, intron, exon, intron as you move through the whole gene. And then it's color-coded for, these are mostly SNPs, the single nucleotide polymorphisms. Um, it, it's giving the reference sequence here, but where, where it's highlighted, there's an alternative sequence also. Also on Ensemble, um, you can link out to tons more information. So for example, it's got an area uh, where it describes the molecular function of your gene. And so here it's categorized the functions, the molecular functions of PLC gamma um, and the source of this information. So whether it binds to calcium, whether it binds to proteins, whether it act, uh, is activated by a receptor, etc. So you can learn lots about your protein by linking out to this molecular function database. There's also a database called Biological Processes, which seems very similar to the molecular function, but this is the process in the cell or in the tissue that PLC gamma is serving. So for example, it's activating MAP kinase kinase activity, um, it's involved in uh, embryonic development or in lipid metabolism, signal transduction, and so you can link out to this information, you can search biomed, you can you can find papers, etc on all these functions. So you can learn a lot really fast by linking to these different websites. Okay. Um, let's wrap this up. Here's your homework for next week. So you're getting this um, on Friday. So it will be due next Friday. Um, and it's similar to what you you should be getting used to this by now. You listen to the lecture, you follow the lecture, and then um, the homework takes you back through some of the databases and information that you've been exposed to. So I hope you're learning a lot and enjoying it, and I will talk to you again soon.